Hi everyone and welcome to part two of my interview with Jane of Jane's Health Adventure. And you can find her on Instagram or on her Facebook page by the same name. And today we're going to her garden and it was getting later in the evening so the lighting was a little bit difficult. So when I edited this, just a disclaimer, it's going to seem a little bit disconnected, uh, but I tried to save all the good bits. And Jane gives us a whole bunch of really great information about community gardening and what she does as an urban gardener. And then stay tuned to the very end and Jane shares from her heart about why she's doing what she's doing and just the convictions of her heart. So here's Jane and me with our Canadian accents. She's from Nova Scotia and I'm from Alberta. Enjoy. So this is Gail's plot and Gail is a wonderful native lady who's taught me lots of little tricks about gardening. What she does is she actually freezes her scraps uh, in her freezer over the winter and then she comes and buries them in between the rows. So she kind of composts right in her garden. She only planted this less than three weeks ago and it's already coming up real nice. So she knows all the good tricks. The beeping is trucks that are working this late at night. And so I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about that. But as you can see, there's the compost, there's all the leaves and all the gardeners share that. Here are the water in this particular garden rather than a s s spigot. And did you buy that or is that part of here? No, I bought it. So, what we have okay. that comes with the garden is the compost in the bins over here. Right. And we can help ourselves to all that compost. Right. And so you carry stuff back and forth so your the back of your car looks more like a garden center. It looks like a barn right now because I'm doing some straw bale stuff at home like you saw in the other video. Right. Yeah, we're going to have to go back to your house sometime so because people have got some questions. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Things are really blooming there. So it's 10 this way and 15 that way. So this part of my plot is what is called Hugel culture. This is a German method where you tr dig a trench and then you bury logs and twigs. And that's why this part is raised up a little bit. Uh, this is another example of Hugel culture. This one is much higher than mine. There's a lot more stuff buried in it. I've also been working on developing this bed as well. And Behind that, you can see Henry's plot. I am learning a lot from Henry. He has a beautiful plot. Everything is perfect. Mine's a little more on the messier side. I just planted some different things today. Um, uh, yes, I have rhubarb. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to, but I haven't been, uh, I haven't been reprimanded yet. This whole section is stuff that will come up every year. So, for example, the dill will go to seed and it will come back. This is thyme and catnip. Uh, these are borage plants. They will have a beautiful purple flower. And, of course, chives. Uh, more thyme, some different mints and sage. These tall ones are Jerusalem artichoke. This is a tuber. And it has a really good source of fiber called inulin. So they kind of look like sunflowers at the top, but it's the tuber that I'm after. And then behind there, I have a row of lettuce. It will be sheltered so it doesn't bolt and go to seed before I have a chance to harvest it. And some other greens. This tall one is actually a parsnip that was planted two years ago and I just didn't get it out of the ground over the winter. Now it's going to create some seeds for me. I've got some spinach and some carrots starting. These are going to be different color carrots and that's a borage in the middle of the spinach. There's borage everywhere because it went to seed so 
I just kind of pick them out like they're, you know, kind of weeds. This is a type of parsley. Got a little uh, ladybug on here. It's a kind of parsley that grows a really nice big root, so you can use the root too. This piece of the corner is also kind of a reseeding area, although this year I disturbed it too much and quite a bit did not come back up. Here's one of my favorites. This beautiful purple green, this is called magenta spreen. You eat it like a spinach. And if any of you know your weeds, yes, this is a weed. Um, I allow this to grow because it's like a spinach, you can eat it. And you see the little white powdery stuff? That's a sign that this plant is actually high in minerals. And so I'm actually going to use this like a spinach and really gain a lot of mineral content in that meal that I make with that. There's a few beans and some lettuce and that's a real quick tour of my particular plot what do you do with the dandelion root so i i'll i'll clean it and then chop it up roast it in the oven until it's dark and then once it's roasted i just use a little magic bullet to make it into a powder oh so all of my compost from the winter has gone in here So that's your compost bin. This is the one that I've been using over the winter. You see lots of eggshells. That will help to add calcium to the soil. All of the white that you see in that section is uh, eggshells that my daughter put there for us. With tomatoes, uh, if you don't have enough calcium in the soil, then you'll get what's called blossom end rot. So you have a black spot on the end of the tomato. So to avoid that, you add calcium and eggshells are the easiest way to do it. So you do a lot of composting. One question, is there any rules about people using chemicals in this garden absolutely not allowed everything has to be natural and organic that is really good yeah. to know some years we're not allowed to grow potatoes if there's a problem with the pest one way to get rid of that pest is to just not allow any potatoes to be grown and we're not allowed things like sunflower seeds because they'll they'll spread like crazy they'll just pop up everywhere what zone are we in higher than two uh, it won't it won't last or the season's not long enough and when is the first frost varies from year to year I know in the spring I don't plant anything before Victoria Day weekend so third weekend of May and then you, you kind of have to just watch the weather in the fall to harvest things we can get snow in october here usually you try to harvest everything you can by september now all the kale i have growing that can stay until the snow comes one thing i wanted to mention is that we have more sunlight uh, the longest day of the year was june the 20th this year and at 10 35 ish I was sitting out on my balcony and it was sunny. This garden is actually smaller than the one in my neighborhood, but there are more plots here because there isn't the wide path. And I think they put the wide path. I'm going to have to talk to my friend who actually helped plan that garden with the recyclable stuff if they did that because they've got the raised gardens with those who have disabilities so they're able to access it. How much of your garden, Jane, did you germinate and start in your home? What percentage would you say? Not very high. Most of it is seed that I put in the ground. So mostly what I germinated at home are things like this zucchini, a couple more zucchinis here, some sorrel, the tomatoes and peppers. Everything else I think came from seed directly in the garden. And you planted this about a month ago? Yes. 
So the people that have the plot next to me, they're first time gardeners. So they have a lot of weed throwing and I helped her to identify uh, the weeds versus the plants. She wasn't really sure. <laughs> So you guys help each other out and you, you learn from each other. Yeah. This is a really simple question, but how do you keep your markers from not fading so you know what's there? Sharpies. And what do you write on? Like what are those? Are they? Uh, these are just from the Dollarama. A Sharpie on a piece of plastic. Jane was just saying you can take a yogurt container and cut it up to use for markers. Jane, so you come down here every day yes. to water and one reason is because of the big old trees. Roots come up into the garden and suck out the moisture so I water every day. Now you've got an Instagram page called Jane's Jane, Health Adventure and you've got a Facebook page called Jane's Health Adventure. That's right. And so what interested you in that? Now, I'm going to say that Jane has done some network marketing, but Jane is more than that. All of the things that she has done is based on stuff that she knows has helped her. She's not selling stuff that just because she needs the income. We could all use the income, right? And the mosquitoes are starting to come out, so we're not, <laughs> we might not be here for that, that long. But so what is your Instagram page about? Uh, right now it has a lot of cooking on it. I love to cook. I love, love to be thrifty. So teaching, how pe teaching people how to cook uh, thrifty. And there's some gardening on there. I also put more so in the stories. I put some of my exercise adventures. It's more about lifestyle, like how to save money, how to cook healthy, just how to have a healthy lifestyle in general. So you are using Epicure yes. and why, what attracted you to that particular product? Well, it's a very clean ingredient list, very clean, nut free, gluten free, great for people with allergies. It's also really convenient too, so I can get supper on the table really fast. And you are working for HealthWorks? Yeah, I work for a natural health clinic and we do live cell analysis. So we help to coach people with their health problems after looking at their blood. And that's in Sherwood Park, Alberta, if you have to be a local person. Right. But you do a lot more than just live cell, live blood cell we analysis. Do, we do ion cleanse. Uh, it's taking the using ions to draw toxins out of your body and and that's about it and you've got a lot of supplements that you're selling there now right yeah natural all natural supplements yeah everything you're doing is to improve your health your gardening you know what it you are growing you know what is in it you know what isn't in it any supplements that you might take you know what's in them and the same with the way your spices and everything else. Exactly, it's living clean is what it is. So eating clean, living clean. What differences do you see when you fall off the wagon? Not good energy. Yeah, that it really affects my energy and it affects my sleep. So life is way better when I'm following a healthy diet and eating clean going to throw this question at you too. The spiritual aspect of your life, what part does that play in your overall health? Well, that's a really cool part too, because when we're taking care of our spirit, the one that God put in us, and when we look at what the Holy Bible has to say about how to take care of our bodies, it's actually, it's packed full of information on how to eat, and how to take care of your soul and your physical being and everything. So I think that's a really important part of having a healthy lifestyle too. Thank you, Jane. This has been really fun and I know people are going to be very interested.